1350. Thank you so much. Bye. Are you ready? <clears throat> Mr. Ready. Attorney? Yes. We're, we're going to really hit you up with a lot of questions today. Anything good? You'll find out. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have questions. I don't like them on the spot. That's the. <laughs> I'm just teasing you, sir. <laughs> I'm just teasing, sir. It's got to be good. I was, then. Just, I was just kidding. Yeah. You got to be happy primary. Yeah, I didn't have one, but yeah. oh, certainly I backed. Uh, Katie Campbell. Good afternoon, everybody. Oops, a little bit of an echo. I want to welcome everybody to the August 24th um, meeting of the of Tourist Development Council. We will do the customary welcome and introductions. Tom Hermanson, Ocean Partners Hospitality. Peter Cranks of the Space Coast Office of Tourism. Andrea Young, City, West Melbourne. Giles Malone, Space Coast Daily. Rod Productions. Keith Winston, Brevard Zoo. Larry Jarns, North Pro Builders. Rob Medina, mayor of the greatest city on the face of the earth. Justin Karen, County Attorney's Office. Karen Stewart, TDO. Okay, the first order of business is we will entertain a motion to, uh, for Commissioner Pritchett to attend by Zoom. So moved. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Next on the agenda, next is the approval of the agenda for the meeting. Any corrections? If not, we'll entertain a motion. So moved. Thank you very much. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. We request that anybody here on the TDC uh, speak now about any potential conflict of interest with respect to items on the agenda. I have a conflict. Let the record note that Mr. Winston will recuse himself with respect to the capital facilities report and the vote on capital facilities expenditures. <clears throat> Next. On the agenda, we will review and approve, unless there are any changes, the minutes of the May 25th minutes. Yeah, as you recall, we, uh, we made some corrections based on the input from the last meeting. So I think they're good now. Very good. I'm assuming those that had corrections reviewed them. I did not have any additions or corrections with that. Do we have a motion for the approval? Motion to approve as written. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Now, the good part, Peter's report. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm gonna point you to a couple of quick things. Uh, page 36 in your packet, um, we just got this. Uh, STR forecast re report for um, the coming year. And a couple of interesting things, you know, I, I was wondering with all the doom and gloom talk on, in the news about the economy and recession and uh, inflation, you know, what, what, was, what were they seeing from a hotel perspective? Um, they're predicting the rest of this year, uh, all-time high ADR, all-time high rev par, and then next year, um, basically returning to pre-COVID numbers and occupancy, and again, record ADR and record 
um, RevPAR. So <clears throat> it looks like from a hotel perspective, they're not showing, at least at this point, any negative impact. And uh, that's, that's a good sign for tourism. Um, and then on page 30, that was on 36 and 37, kind of shows that. And then page 38, our room night demand report, um, interestingly, um, we were the only beach destination in our peer set that had a positive um, growth in number of rooms rented, um, one, we're almost 2%, 1.8%. All the others were down in July. And then year to date, you can see we are still um, exceeding all other uh, peer set uh, folks in um, overall growth for, for the year at 16, a little over 16%. And our closest is Jacksonville at 11 and change. So um, seems like we're doing well compared to our competitive set. And that, sir, is my report, unless there's any questions. Thank you. Next on the agenda is Commissioner Tobias proposal. Uh, I understood that Commissioner Tobias was gonna be here. I don't see him in the room. Uh, I did not put this in, on the agenda. Somebody else apparently did. <clears throat> so I will open the floor to anybody that wants to speak on the issue. Yeah, I asked for it to be on the agenda in, in courtesy of uh, Commissioner Tobias. He went to the trouble of coming to the meeting and, and obviously preparing a detailed report. I want to thank him for that. Um, <clears throat> it seemed to me um, a big change. You know, the proposal would involve a tremendous change in the way things are structured currently, um, which um, obviously has uh, come about because of recent events. But um, Personally, um, I think that our system that we have is good and we've got sort of checks and balances. Um, and of course the county commission uh, has the final say so, but, uh, and they uh, vote and act accordingly. But from my perspective, um, I think our system is good and it works well. Um, and obviously we have to respect everyone's opinions and uh, the county commission has the final say so. so. I just wanted to put it on the agenda due to Commissioner Tobias uh, efforts to try to come up with some sort of a uh, talking point. Oh, sure. Yeah, the mics, when you have to read, speak when you're read or not. Um, um, uh, I concur with what Giles said. I did speak to Commissioner Tobias after he proposed this. And as you know, he's a history professor. Um, and I did talk about um, the economic incentives attached to his proposal sort of reverse what TDCs do. Um, it's classically called the tragedy of the commons. And you know, in New England towns, you had a common and everybody could graze their animal on it. But the economic incentives was if you graze more animals than your neighbor, you got a short-term benefit, but long-term everybody grazed too many animals and it killed the commons. And that's the economic incentives here. The economic incentives and proposal drive individual hoteliers to fight for their market share of a smaller market because there's not as much money bringing people into the market. And so the economic incentives are reversed in what he's recommending from what a TDC does, which is we pool our money to make a bigger market. And then everybody can fight for that market share within it, but we're growing the market. So, I mean, I think he understood that, um, but I just think that those incentives I think eventually would drive our tourism market down because people are, are advertising individual properties, not the destination. Um, and so I just think the incentives are turned around for that proposal and that's a dangerous precedent and makes us less competitive with other markets that are marketing a destination versus marketing an individual hotel. Anybody else? Mayor? So I'll, I'll, I'll weigh in. Uh, I'm in agreement with Giles. Uh, ultimately, the Board of County Commissioners uh, make those decisions, obviously, but uh, the incentives that were discussed or re realigning those pennies, so to speak, taken away from cultural and, and the visitors complex, I think in the long run would hinder our mission. Our mission is to get beds uh, into, our, into our county, right? So 
Um, the visitor center plays right into that. Our cultural events plays right into that. So those are, those are my thoughts. I'm not in agreement with reassigning uh, any of those funds. Thank you. Uh, it's an interesting proposal. Uh, reminds me of my late mom used to tell me that two not wrongs never make a right. Uh, I think it falls within that bucket. I believe in the mission of the TDC and I've given many hours and much effort to see it uh, run well and uh, above board and run effectively because we are I'm daily within our business reminded that we are competing against uh, <clears throat> much more established players in bigger markets for the same customer. So I agree with the sentiment that uh, that everybody doing their own thing would is not an effective uh, solution. Uh, it would turn the TDC into a, a marketing department reviewing people's advertising bills and giving back as little as $50 to some collector of the tax in their Airbnb uh, that might rent a few times a year. <clears throat> so I don't think it's an effective solution. There is the, uh, I'm a strong believer in fairness and equity. And uh, while Commissioner Tobias proposal, if applied to all collectors of the tax, I think is unusable or un, un I say uh, administratively impossible, not something we should pursue. Um, the precedent was set with, uh, with the Driftwood proposal that obviously to some degree should be open on a fairness basis to other um, large collectors of the tax. And one of the things that is established um, many times over throughout the state um, visit Florida, visit Orlando, for example, and also correct me if I'm wrong, Peter, but the Daytona Visitor Center. Those are examples whereby there are specific tourism destinations within markets where the bed tax is collected throughout the county, but then a certain percentage of those bed taxes are collected to a organization which still has to answer to the county authority, um, but is kind of partially removed from the actual Tourist Development Council. Visit Orlando, again, correct me if I'm wrong, is, is such an organization, they call them, instead of a, a TDC office, they're a DMO that receives funds from the, uh, from the bed tax and then have to answer to how they use those in a, in a marketing capacity. And that is something that, uh, has been established, has been ongoing for many years in these areas, and something that we may uh, look at in Brevard County. Uh, not to say that there isn't, I think staff does a great job with the resources that they have in marketing the whole county. We have not many times seen eye to eye. I said, we do not always see eye to eye on how those marketing dollars are spent. And it comes down to nuances of marketing are you marketing the brand? Which brand are you marketing? Which one is known? Uh, uh, that argument I think is well understood and known by everybody here. Uh, but if, for example, you were to have a beachside marketing organization that focused on the beaches, uh, it, would, it would be interesting to have the TDC, whoever sits on it and future commissions look at whether or not those could be partially funded with some of the bed tax in order to more specifically market uh, those beach destinations. Uh, but it's a, that's a subject for, I'm sure, much more discussion, but uh, one that, that I'll be uh, looking into. So Mr. Chair, if I, I may, I just wanted to tag a little bit on, on what you said. I think so much has been said uh, about marketing, correct, and, and the driftwood issues. But uh, we've, we've had an outstanding marketing team here among us. And I don't think we, we've applauded their efforts. Uh, I know I've been a, a resident of, of Brevard County for over 34 years. And in 34 years, I don't remember. I don't remember us marketing the city of Palm Bay. I don't remember that until recently when we, we specifically set out and, and did that dedicated service. And so I think we're, we're on the right path when we talk about 
the, the unified front of our tourism, our tourism industry and our county from the south all the way to the north and everything in between. So I, I think we should recognize our marketing uh, team. They've done an outstanding job and, and I was quite pleased to see how they incorporated the city of Palm Bay and, and even the, the southern cities in Titusville and such. So those comments had to be said. Thank you. Yep, I, I agree with you. Any other comments on that issue before we move forward? Hearing none. Uh, committee reports, marketing committee. Speaking of, do you have anything you want to start with before I? Keith? No, my understanding is that the um, Board of County Commissioners did approve the marketing plan since the last um, uh, um, TDC meeting. Um, and in addition, earlier, we just saw the results and I think the proof's in the pudding. Um, so really record numbers. So uh, to echo what the mayor said, congratulations to the team. And I think we have a really exciting plan for next year. Um, and, you know, congrats, you guys are doing a great job. Yes, that is correct. The um, the marketing plan and budget that we laid out for the TDC last month was approved by the Board of County Commissioners at the last meeting. I just have a brief update as well for everybody. Um, everybody in here saw earlier in the summer the sketches for our new um, cruise campaign, the idea that you can uh, make Port Canaveral into a destination by walking walking, put your imagination on, um, right off the ship into another adventure. And that unlike other ports, this is not a spot where you simply go just to get on and off the ship, but actually that there are things that you can do um, to enhance that, that vacation. So I wanted to show everybody who hasn't seen it yet, just a quick preview of what the, uh, the end results were. Um, and so we took that very literal approach that you can step right off the ship right into a uh, part of your vacation. Um, it's been really fun to see the reactions online. We're tracking the, um, the engagement on them and the uh, click throughs and all of our metrics. Um, so far, they're performing very well. They've been out about um, six weeks now or so. Um, so just a real fun take on, um, on that cruise messaging. And this is just I just pulled up, you know, the highlights for you guys. There's, as we've talked about, many dozens of different iterations of these messages and sizes, depending on where they're being placed. And then we also, as part of that, put up some new um, uh, billboards for Port Canaveral. Um, we chose the nighttime image so you guys could see, in addition to using um, the element of shapes to grab your attention, you know, looking like the cruise ships coming off the board or the rockets coming off the board. We also added the element of some lights so that it looks, you know, like the engines of the rocket and um, highlighted the, the call to action um, on the Space Coast. So um, we've had a lot of positive reactions to them. We're looking at all of the billboards along um, 95 and 75 and how we can take this sort of really eye-catching ideas and apply it uh, to those boards as well. So be on the lookout for, um, for some new billboard designs as well. And then uh, July was a non-surfing Santa record-breaking month for us as it relates to our public relations efforts. So as any of you know who have been part of our committees in the past, um, surfing Santas gets picked up internationally from like October through January. People can't get enough of that topic. So um, it's an amazing story. It's a story that garners us quite a bit of media attention. Um, so it's always setting the bar very high. July was a great month for us. Um, we had 34 placements secured, a lot of really high value placements um, with a publicity value of just over a million dollars. So if I would have to buy you know, that space, that's about what it would cost us. And those are um, Condé Nast, Southern Living, National Geographic, Fox News, um, Yahoo, and the topics, oh, maybe, doesn't wanna click. Oh, if not, we'll just use your laptop, Candace. Will you click it for me? Or is it frozen? Well, well, I'll just tell you, it's okay. Um, 
We had a great pickup for accessibility. So um, Florida Space Coast as a one of the top 10 accessible beaches across the US and Canada. Um, Krabby Wheels in Cocoa Beach, for those of you who are not aware, um, allowed us to utilize some of their equipment during our most recent photo shoot. Um, and from that, we were able to pick up some engagement just about the ability to rent um, things like the beach wheelchair chairs and beach strollers and highlight some of the features like the Moby mats and things of that nature. Um, a lot of family travel coverage, but the biggest this month again, sea turtles and bioluminescence. People cannot stop talking about those two topics. That traffic has not slowed down at all. Um, a great Fox uh, weather live hit from Melbourne earlier in the month for sea turtles. Um, so just really strong. And then of course, month with all of the launch coverage, we expect August to be another great uh, PR month. And then the only other thing I had on the slide was just a couple of upcoming dates. Uh, the next and last marketing committee for this year is September 22nd at 2 p.m. It's in Cocoa Beach. The summer campaign that is currently running does end just after Labor Day. Um, so that'll be coming to an end, but just behind it is the fall campaign, which will start that very first part of October. Our international rep um, from the UK and Germany, Roxana Timis, is in town this week. Um, she is doing her FAM, um, so we've been working on getting her onboarded, so you'll start to see the international efforts really picking up um, as she gets uh, up and running. And then we do have a, the Delta Vacations show, which we have not been to in a few years, for all obvious reasons, um, is in Atlanta in September. So we will be attending that. Yes, and we do have copies of the deck if anybody wants to see any of that information. I have. Very good. <clears throat> Thank you. Since the mayor said something, I think you do a great job. We all do. Capital Facilities Committee report. Thank you, yes. Dr. Malone. We met um, over there at the TDC offices, had a good meeting, and the uh, aquarium grant was approved for uh, $15 million and a two year extension. And then the Warbird Museum got 50% of their grant request also awarded. And um, looking forward to uh, those developing uh, projects. So there's no presentation expected, correct? Uh, no, sir, but we, yeah. we could certainly ask. Uh, no, no, I mean, it's so the committee recommended to grant the materials in here, uh, the $15 million over 10 years and a two year extension for the zoo. Sorry to repeat what you just said. Does anybody want to hear any more specifics? I'm sure you're all familiar with the projects. We do have a representative here uh, that's affiliated with the aquarium program. Does anybody need any more information before we put the motion from the committee to a vote? Okay, we have a second from the committee. It looks like everybody's enthusiastic about the program. I can tell from your faces. I was about to say, since we're about to vote on 15,000, maybe, I'm sorry, 15 million, it might be nice to hear from Keith and hear what yeah, he has 15 to 15 million is nothing these days. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Keith, uh, uh, we, um, one of the, our esteemed members would like to hear from you about the application. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, just to clarify, um, you know, initially we received a grant of 10 million uh, over eight years. Um, we've come back with a larger request as the project has grown uh, to 15 million over 10 years. Let me tell you why this is so significant for us. Um, we actually started our fundraising, our capital campaign in December. We hit 47 million of our 100 million goal last weekend, um, assuming it gets approved at the county commission meeting. That puts us over the 50 million mark in the $52 million range. 
that is a critical number for us. We have a marketing campaign that's gonna hit once it hits 50 million, because that really makes it real for people who go, this is really happening. So I'm really excited at the thought that the TDC funds is what puts that over that mark. We sort of started in some ways with the TDC funds and it puts us over the mark uh, to go out to the rest of the community. And a lot of our funds uh, this fall in terms of letting people know about the project and what's involved are not just here in Brevard County, uh, but they're gonna be where we've set up essentially organizations in Indy River County and in Orange County and in um, Volusia County. So those are the zoos marketing dollars going in, not TDC marketing dollars, but we're giving people another reason to visit and that's starting already. So um, obviously with your approval, we're really excited about the project. The plans keep getting bigger and better. Uh, um, certainly more expensive as construction costs go up. Um, but I will tell you one major change since we last presented um, that we have gotten very heavily engaged in manatee rehab and rescue. And there is now a major manatee uh, rescue facility built into the aquarium on public display. Um, so it shows the best that the county has to offer. We're very excited about our plans and um, I appreciate your consideration. Excellent. Uh, if, the, if anybody hasn't seen the aquarium materials, the latest slide decks and stuff, I believe they're all online. Um, it's just really, really an impressive project. And it'll be, I think, even more successful than the zoo has been for the county. Um, very excited about it. They did score above the minimum threshold and received a unanimous vote of those present at the Capital Facilities Committee. Uh, Capital Facilities Committee meeting. We have a motion on the committee's recommendation for the grant of $15 million over 10 years and as a two-part motion and a two-year extension. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Here. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I, 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 Commissioner Pritchett, did we hear your aye? Yes, sir, you did. Thank you very much, Commissioner. So that, uh, any, any opposed? Hearing none, that motion passes unanimously. Uh, I, I did not, I, it's still, it's still Giles's, Still, Giles's committee report. Did you want to go over the Valiant uh, proposal? Oh. I'm sorry. There, there is a recommendation from the committee, and we're putting that to a vote. Okay. The the committee reviewed and recommended a three hundred and seventy five thousand dollar recommendation for the Valiant Air Command's hangar display slash meeting space. Uh, that is a motion from the committee requiring a second. I'll second. We have a second. Is there any discussion before we call, take, put that to a vote? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Would you like to, Commissioner Pritchett, would you like to vote on that one? Yes, sir. I tried to. I'm I'll trying to do it on time so I don't come in after you guys are done. Okay, thank you. Uh, all eyes there. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you, Peter, for helping us along there. Uh, next, we have the Beach Improvement Committee report. Um, we don't have anything new to report. Uh, we're just going to have our last meeting of the year on October 18th, and it'll be at the TDO offices in Cocoa Beach. That's it. And the um, Tourism and Lagoon grants are going to the uh, board on Tuesday for approval. So. Can I make this one comment? It is actually the four year anniversary. Since 
And since you're mentioning those shells, you were at Castaway Cove in Palm Bay this past weekend doing an outstanding job. I just felt the, the need to, to insert that in the greatest city on the face of the earth. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Sports Committee report. Hey everyone, uh, we don't really have too much new to report here. Uh, looks like we just need approval of the actions from our August 9th meeting where our grants were approved. Could I get a motion to uh, approve those actions? I think we'll set, I'll second it. Okay. Because the committee put it forth, correct? So I'll say from that motion. I have a quick question, Larry. The uh, PBR Spring Training Showcase, can you give us a bit of information on that if it's available? I actually don't have that information okay. at the moment. Um, Peter, do you by chance have any information on that one off the top of your head? Yeah, I mean, we have a full application from them that I can I can share. I don't have that with me at this moment, but um, all those three, uh, the PBR spring training, the Space Force T minus 10 miler and the Moon Golf Junior Championships are all new events. Those are events that have never occurred in Brevard County before. And as you, you may recall, last year we voted um, or you voted to allow the office to take $50,000 to support new events to try to bring those here. So um, I'll tell you what what uh, I do know and on the PBR, um, they are anticipating 1800 room nights being generated. Uh, it, their event happens between uh, March 11th and March 19th. Um, so it's, you know, it's basically it's a baseball spring training event where they're bringing lots of people here uh, and the committee voted to uh, to give them 14,660 of a total of 39,530 that was allocated out of that 50,000. Do you know what location they're going to use for that, Peter? I believe it's going to be at the um, the launch pad uh, complex, which is the old Coco Expo. Got it. Thank you. Yes, sir. I have no other questions on that. And then I also, uh, I think our next scheduled meeting is incorrect here is August 9th, since that already happened. Uh, I don't, do we have an update on when that next meeting would be, our last meeting of the year? We haven't voted. No, I'll, I'll call for the vote. I believe so. Yeah, I think I don't think there's another one scheduled at, at this point. Okay. So then we do not have any additional new business here. Mr. Chair, we, point of order, we haven't yep. voted on yep. the motion. We're, we're going to call the vote now on the action from the committee. We have a motion from the committee and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Johns. Whipping right through this agenda. Cultural Committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, if you could look on page 67, which is your last page, it's a fold out. And right after where you see the project name, the next column there is out of county attendees. And I just wanted to bring this to your attention. Look at these numbers, look at the amount. These are verified by the TDO. These are not numbers that they just pulled up out of the air that, and we can't verify. These are verified numbers. These are some very healthy numbers, as you can see. So the return on investment for the, um, for the grants that we give them, I, I think is, has, it has, we've done what the county has asked us to do. We raised the bar two years ago. We're getting a much better um, quality of applicant now. And um, based on what we spoke about earlier, it is the cultural committee that has their head on the, on the block, so to speak. So I just wanted you to all to be aware of the number of, in, um, of out of county residents that they are bringing in. So certainly we wanna keep the cultural committee. It also shows that with, with um, 14,040 
visitors going to the Museum of Dinosaurs and Ancient Cultures, certainly people want something to do when they're not at the beach. I mean, I would never have thought that that would have brought in that many people, but obviously it does. So I'm here today to ask the TDC to please approve the organizations and events for the fiscal year 22-23, the cultural grant request funding as they are listed below. So it comes from the committee, it needs a second. We have a motion from the committee and a second. Any discussion before we vote? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing no opposition, yet another unanimous vote. We'll wrap it up with board reports. First on the list is Commissioner Pritchett. Commissioner Pritchett, anything to report to the committee? Yeah, thank you guys so much for um, all your work and investment in the county. Um, just a couple of things that I, I wanna mention um, moving forward. I um, would like to start trying to figure out a way to get to more, some more funding, maybe down to some things in Palm Bay. I think USSSA is a little low on the totem pole too and probably the uh, visitor Cape Center as well and the natural beaches. So these are some things I'm gonna be looking towards if there's a way we could start, maybe include them a little more in some of our media advertisement. So I just want to uh, make that um, comment to you guys so you start thinking on a little bit too. Thank you, uh, Mayor Medina. So I, I have none to report, but I, um, I just like to say, we, we all serve at the pleasure of the Board of County Commissioners, and it is truly an honor and blessing for me to be among each and every one of you, uh, especially as I look, uh, look across such great leaders as yourself, Mr. Chair, uh, Giles Malone and, and Keith, and it, it's just an honor for me to be part of this team, and, and I value each and every one of you. So I took this opportunity, nothing to report, but to say thank you for everything you do on our behalf. And, and I'm blessed to be part of this team. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, Braga. Um, I just wanted to take the opportunity to let everyone know about an event that is going to be going on um, as a hospitality professional. The Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association is going to be hosting its second annual Rose Awards, and it's going to be held on September 22nd at the beautiful Hilton Garden Inn in Cocoa Beach Oceanfront. Um, and this is an opportunity for us as hospitality professionals to recognize frontline personnel who are out there every day providing our guests with great service that come to the community and um, there's many great stories I encourage you to be there and sponsor and if you have someone in your organization that you'd like to recognize it's a really um, neat event and um, right now I have to let you know it is not easy to be on the front lines in the service business it is very very challenging and um, they they do an amazing job. My team does an amazing job, but people are having a little less patience in, in the world. And I think uh, they get the brunt of that sometimes. So please uh, take the opportunity to sponsor or attend um, to recognize these amazing ambassadors for our community, because these are the ones who are each and every day greeting uh, the guests that we're working on bringing here. So please mark your calendars. If you need any more information, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Galzerano. Nothing really to report, but um, that is the FRLA puts that on, but it is replacing what the TDC used to do. And we used to do the Bard County Hospitality Specialist of the Year. So I think as much as we can be involved in it, it would be fantastic. Uh, I don't have anything to report other than it'll be exciting to see all the people in town around the Artemis launch. It's it's fun to witness how excited people get around the big launches. Certainly, fondly remember the uh, the special shuttle launches from time to time. Um, so it's going to be a, a zoo, especially in our part of town, up in Port Canaveral and Cape Canaveral and Cocoa Beach. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be driving a uh, port parking shuttle 
supplement the team here, trying to get people. We, we got five ships in port as well. Five ships, and there's going to be probably 50,000 people on George King Boulevard trying to get into the port. So that should be interesting. Mr. Jarns. Uh, no new news to report. Just would like to um, piggyback on a lot of the comments here. I, you know, I really appreciate the uh, Board of County Commissioners and the opportunity that I was given this year to serve with everyone here. It's been an, an awesome opportunity. We learned a lot. We laughed, we cried, we went through a bunch of different things uh, with some of the, the things that we talked about. It was great and uh, just love living in Brevard County. Very excited about the launch. We have a lot of people uh, that we know coming in from out of state for it. And it's uh, just a great place to be. And I think the future is very bright here. So we I appreciate everything. Mr. Malone. <clears throat> yeah, reiterating uh, Mayor Medina's comments, I'm uh, very proud and uh, of the TDC, what it's done over the years. I think the numbers that we're seeing now generated in tourism tax and benefits to the community, cultural arts, all these different organizations is, is amazing. Um, the forefathers who put this together has a great vision and now we're benefiting from the fruits of, um, of an incredible tourism business we have here, thanks to the staff and thanks to this great you know, environment we live in. Just for clarity, um, personally speaking, um, I do. I sit on this board. I'm willing to serve on this board because I believe in uh, it's it's very good for the community, and uh, I love Brevard County. Um, my partner and I have had a business where we have a spring training business uh, for 34 years, and of course, sitting on the TDC, we make no requests or no uh, applications for any assistance from the TDC because that would be a conflict of interest, but. We generate about 8,000 room nights every spring uh, that we have done for 34 years. So you do the math, it's pretty significant, but we, we sacrifice getting assistance because we believe in serving on this TDC and helping guide the ship as much as we possibly can. So um, I'm very excited for the future of Brevard County. I think we need to keep this TDC train on the tracks and uh, get our uh, ship um, with all the sailors sailing in the same direction, because with all the diversity and all the problems we have in this country, we've got to stick together. We've got to work together, um, whatever side you're on. So that's that. Looking forward to the Artemis launch this weekend. It's a historic launch. And uh, we're going to have, gosh, I think a hundred and something thousand extra people in town. So very excited about that. So thank you. Mr. Winston. I echo a lot of the other comments. While your people are in town, shameless plug, uh, through Sunday, uh, Florida resident adults are half off here at the zoo. So if you wanna send people something that's gonna be a really good deal, mostly we do that for residents like hospitality workers, for two weeks a year, it's half off for adults from Florida. And then in September, kids are free at the zoo. So please tell all your consistents, Mr. Mayor, please tell all your folks, kids are free for the entire month of September, so. We hope to see you all here. Ms. Young. I should have, oops, I should have mentioned that the next cultural meeting is going to be September 15th, 2022. I forgot to mention that. Um, I don't have a report other than that. Thank you. And thank you for your approval. Peter, you get the final word. Just uh, thank you to everybody on the committee for all the work that they've done. A lot of the subcommittees um, spent many hours reviewing a lot of grant applications, and we greatly appreciate that. Um, a lot of work goes into those subcommittees and, and certainly um, here at the TDC as well. So we appreciate everything you guys do. That was it. If there's nothing else to come before the committee. We will adjourn. Thank you. That's a record, Tom. Good job, man. Let's see, that's... Uh... 45 minutes, 42 minutes.